So if we want to solve some of these problems uh, with linear programming, uh, this is one way that we can do this in Excel. So I want to show you what this looks like, and we'll go through and uh, do it step by step. So the prompt is about a brewery. You work for a brewery that produces two types of beer, Pilsner and Stout. A barrel of Pilsner requires zero units of oats, 30 units of hops, and 50 units of barley. A barrel of stout requires 50 units of oats, 20 units of hops, and 30 units of barley. The brewery currently has 200 units of oats, 400 units of hops, and 500 units of barley in inventory. And then we get to our revenue piece. A barrel of Pilsner sells for $400 and a barrel of Stout sells for $500. What we want to know is if the brewery wants to maximize its revenue, how many barrels of Pilsner and Stout should it produce? So this is sort of what we're trying to do. So let's take it step by step. And I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. So the first thing that we want to do is identify our objective function. And our objective function is to maximize revenue. We get that from uh, the sort of the last sentence here. And we're going to do that by optimizing the number of barrels of Pilsner and Stout that we produce based on our limit, our inventory constraints. So we have a few decision variables, right? So these are the things that we actually can change. And so it's Pilsner and Stout. We get to decide how much of each barrel, how many barrels of each we will produce. So to start this off, I just set those to one because we don't actually know what the ideal number is. And then we have a, a few assumptions. So these are things that we can't, Nest, you know, we're not sort of going to change. We're just going to take these as is. So we've got the Pilsner and the Stout assumptions here. And in this case, um, you know, this is the price that we're going to set, like what we can sell these as, right? So this is how we're going to get our revenue figures. And so we can set $400 for each Pilsner, a barrel of Pilsner that we sell, and $500 for each barrel of Stout. And so I'm gonna just do some formatting here so it's a little bit easier to read. Um, we're gonna make this a you know, dollars and um, make this label a little bit better. So price per barrel. And uh, now we want to just calculate our objective function. So basically, we're going to take the number of barrels of Pilsner and multiply it by the sort of the price we get per barrel. And then um, the same for Stout, and then we add those two together. So this is really our first uh, linear equation. And we can just say that this is the number of barrels. Yeah. And so the easiest way to do this is to use some product. So we take these and make sure they get weighted by those. And as we would expect, if we only created one of each, the total would be 900. And I'm going to set that to dollars so we know what we're talking about. And uh, that gets us started, right? So our what we want to do is maximize this objective function, right? And I'm just going to go ahead and uh, expand this a little bit. So we know that this is, we want to max our revenue, right? So we'll just go ahead and start there. If we left the problem here and we ran it, it would basically you know, suggest that we produce an infinite number of barrels because there are no constraints. So we need to pop in the constraints for a Pilsner and a Stout. And our, in, our inventory constraints, we really have uh, three, right? So we have a limited number of oats, 
we have a limited number of hops and we have a limited number of barley. And um, we can see that we get those units for each one. So if we think back to our problem, a barrel of Pilsner requires zero units of oats, 30 units of hops and 50 units of barley. So it should look something like this. Right, so all we're doing is taking in the, the code from the problem and putting it in here. We're gonna do the same thing for stout. So stout requires uh, 50 units of oats and 20 units of hops and 30 units of barley. Uh, at this point, we probably want to calculate uh, how much is used uh, per barrel of each type. So, um, you know, this goes back to our uh, sum product technique. So we can take the number of barrels of Pilsner and Stout that we produce, and we make sure that that gets multiplied and added up. Um, according to those weights. And the math should be relatively easy to check, right? It all adds up to 50 here. And since we used uh, you know, a reasonable set of relative and absolute references, we should be able to pull that down. And these should all make sense, right? If we produced one barrel of Pilsner and one barrel of Stout, these numbers make sense, right? So the total amount of hops we would use is 50 and the total amount of barley we would use is 80 and the total amount of oats we would use is 50. So that's, we're starting to sort of make our way through this problem. The last thing that we would wanna do is we would want to put in our limits, right? So we have inventory limits here and those inventory limits are laid out 200 units of oats, 400 units of hops, and 500 units of barley. So we would want to make sure that those go in so we don't blow any of our inventory budgets. And um, it only stands to reason we can't produce beer with um, physical materials we don't have. So in this case, each of these, the amount that we use has to be less than or equal to the actual number of limits that we have. So these are the constraints that we're working with. So I'm gonna sort of show you how to set this up in Excel. Now that we've got this laid out, I'm gonna set this up in Excel and um, we'll talk about it. We'll run it a few times so we can refine it a bit. So when we go to data and we go to the solver, we're gonna to have to tell the solver all of these different aspects. So the first thing we need to do is it's gonna ask, well, what do you want me to maximize or minimize or whatever? Well, we wanna maximize this, right? And we do in fact wanna maximize our revenue. We're gonna, we're gonna maximize that revenue by adjusting these values, right? We're gonna change those values until we find the maximum value that we can get. Then we're gonna add our constraints, right? So we're going to add each one of these constraints, so the amount of oats used should be less than or equal to 200. And the amount of hops used should be less than or equal to 400. And then the amount of barley used should be less than or equal to 500. Right, we say, um, we add it, we say cancel. Um, this is a pretty good starting point where I mean, you'll see in a second that we'll still make some changes, but the last thing we want to do is we want to make sure that make unconstrained variables non-negative is checked because we should not be allowed to make a negative number of barrels. That's bad. And we want to make sure that we tell it to use simplex LP. That's the technique that we want it to use. If we pick another one, we might get some crazy answers that we don't really want. We want to keep this uh, as linear, right? So once we have this laid out, when we go to solve it, 
It'll come back pretty quickly because it's not a terribly difficult problem. And it's not terrible the way it works. The problem that we have though is you'll see that we can't really sell a sixth of a barrel, at least in this problem, we're gonna assume that we can't. If we somehow could, I guess it would be fine, but we're gonna assume that we can't. There's a constraint that we can add to make that happen. We wanna force this solution to only use like whole numbers here. So we're gonna add a new constraint that's gonna tell it uh, these cell references should be integers. And we're gonna add that constraint and that's gonna help guide the solution so that these are whole numbers. So let's rerun it again and see how it comes out. Again, it finishes pretty quickly. You'll see that um, we've now maximized it with that new constraint. And so the ideal amount that we should create according to this model is seven barrels of Pilsner and four barrels of Stout. And uh, we don't have any oats left over. We've used them all. We have uh, some hops and barley left over. And if you decided you just couldn't live without knowing how much was left, right? Our unused portion here is going to be the limit minus how much we actually used. And when you pull that down, you'll see that we still have 110 unit, uh, units of hops left and uh, 30 units of barley left. And uh, that's it. That's our inventory. So uh, I hope this was helpful. And, um, you know, feel free to ask for help if uh, something else comes up.